Hi, welcome to an introduction of building web apps with Tsunami Part 1. This is the first part in a series of videos demonstrating a number of techniques for dramatically speeding up the construction, deployment, and management of web applications. For Part 1, we'll be introducing a new build system, a new web framework with HTML5 and WebSocket support, the actor model, and managing Windows and Linux machines. Now to demonstrate. What you can see here on the screen is a typical setup one would use to build web applications. Here we have the interactive shell for driving the build. Here we have all of the code that specifies both the content and the logic of the web app. And here we have several open sessions with the Windows server and the Linux server. Let's start by examining the logic for the web app in the Tsunami web app file. This is one file in a project of 10 files, but it contains all of the web app specific logic. You can see that Tsunami now supports code completion for full projects. At the top here we have a simple API for building web pages. Here we have a collection of the typical elements of a web page. A head with jQuery and a title, and a body with a button, a header, a HTML5 canvas, and some JavaScript. These combine to create a HTML5 web page. Generating the HTML is far more flexible and composable than other templating approaches. We have also used similar APIs to implement the routing strategy. I will leave the description for how this works for a later video, but this style of composition makes it trivial to mix in other components. For example, wikis, blogs, and content management systems. Now we'll have a look at the function echo. Echo is a very basic state machine that is being used to drive this app's WebSocket API. This simple state machine has a single state and a single transition that goes back to the same state. The state listens for incoming messages and on transition sends back the exact same message, hence the name Echo. State machines and message passing form the basis of an actor model. In a later presentation, we'll cover the use of structural typing and pattern matching and how they can be used to build a Scala ACA or an Erlang style actor system. So let's get this web app running. You can see in the shell on the left that we have a number of function calls for various build actions. This is the build system. It is designed to be very fast and easily extended. You can see here that the redeploy function is defined locally in terms of the other built-in functions. So in order to build this project, I simply select this piece of code, hit Alt Enter, and 3.5 seconds later the project is built. Now if I want to run it, I simply select and run the next line. Startup time is instant. We can check it is running by going to the actual page. The Tsunami web server runs as a service installable standalone executable and does not have any dependency on IIS or any other external web server framework. When we look at the home page, we get exactly what we would expect, a header with three links in an unordered list. We can quickly test the routing with the AB pages. This matches what we set up in code. Now we'll open the latency test page. Here you'll notice two circles, a blue one and a red one. When I move my mouse, the blue circle is updated to follow the mouse position and a message is sent to the Echo WebSocket API. The return message then updates the position of the red circle. On my local machine, the red circle is updated so quickly that it can no longer be seen. This is because the updates are near instantaneous. So let's stop this server. You can see now that the web page has been disconnected and the position of the red circle no longer updates. Now let's deploy to the cloud so that other people can use it. For this demonstration, we are using a Windows instance on Amazon EC2. We've opened up a remote desktop so we can see the files appear as they get deployed. Deployment to the cloud is simply an X copy of 2.8 megabytes of files, so it is pretty fast. Instead of using the remote desktop GUI, we can use Tsunami's built-in Xterm client to manage these servers. This client works with both Linux and Windows servers and is even capable of handling Vim and window resizing.
Once the files are on the server, we can run the program and check that the website is up and running. And there we are. Now let's check the latency. We can see the red circle is now trailing the blue circle. The latency is much longer now, roughly 100 milliseconds. This is common for EC2 instances. So we'll stop that. To ensure the server keeps running after an instance restart, we will install the server as a service on the machine and start it. We'll check that it's up again. Great. So there we have it. We have now deployed a high-speed F-Sharp web server running to the cloud. Alright, now suppose we wanted to make a change. Perhaps change Hello World on the homepage to be Goodbye World. We simply go into Tsunami, edit the text, run Redeploy, and 13 seconds later the site is updated. So that concludes this presentation. We have shown you how quick and easy it is to deploy interactive web applications to the cloud.